ACS is here with Douglas Kaiser, a professor at Yale Law School and author of the new book, Regulating from Nowhere, Environmental Law and the Search for Objectivity. Professor Kaiser, tell us what motivated you to write this book and what your intentions were. Thank you. Well, the book's uh, origins go back to a conference I attended several years ago, in fact. Uh, it was a week-long conference on environmental economics, economic approaches to environmental regulations. And the reason I attended the conference is that the keynote speaker was Tom Schelling, who is one of the most brilliant and brilliantly humane economic thinkers that we've had over the last hundred years. This was a time that was before he had become the Nobel laureate, Tom Schelling. But it was a time when he was pretty advanced in his career. I think he was in his very early 80s. Um, and I was just so excited at the chance to spend time with him there. He uh, is one of the most original and lucid minds I've ever encountered. Everything that came out of his mouth that week was a novel thought. Nothing was canned. Everything was thought over. You could see the wheels turning in his mind. and you could, There was a sparkle of warmth in his eyes. And he would address the most important issues, climate change, species loss, the most important issues with this incredible clarity. Um, but there was, there's a sort of sad part to the story, which is that his view on climate change was that um, this is essentially an unsolvable problem. He had basically three points. One, he thought we overstated the danger of climate change because we forget how ingenious humans are and will adapt to climate change without cost. Two, uh, if we do want to do something about climate change, then we should just look at geoengineering. We should be changing the atmosphere by spraying the clouds with little mirrors or sulfate aerosols or something like that. Um, because that'll be a lot cheaper than cutting emissions. Or three, if we do want to cut emissions and have something like the Kyoto Protocol, then we ought to think of that as a foreign aid transfer to developing worlds, not an environmental regulation. Um, now, I asked him, those first two points depend very much on faith in technology. What if it turns out that the next 200 years of technology aren't as good as the last 200 years were? And it, his eyes lost their sparkle. And he said, well, then we can't solve this problem. What horrified me as a young academic who was concerned about these issues is that Tom Schelling was somebody who was, a, at, he was there when we devised the Marshall Plan after World War II. He was a key architect of the anti-proliferation strategy for nuclear weapons during the Cold War. So he's seen the heights and the depths of international cooperation. And his view on climate change was that unless there's some magic technological bullet, we're toast. And so for me to hear that from a mind that I admired so deeply um, was unsettling. And what I wanted to do in writing the book was to figure out why. Why did he think this was a hopeless endeavor? Why did he think that it was an irresolvable problem? And it turns out that a lot of the reason why is because of the very theoretical frameworks we're using to identify what the problem is. And that there are alternative frameworks available in which hope can flourish, or at least flourish a bit more than the economic approach. So that's kind of wh where the book originated. Great. Thanks, Professor Kaiser. Can you speak to a little bit how the book describes alternative theories or how you contribute to or respond to existing theories of regulation? Well, the book, in some sense, is trying to find common ground between a variety of different approaches. It's trying to articulate in a more clear language the limitations of cost-benefit analysis so that even the proponents of cost-benefit analysis might understand what the critiques are motivated by that they're receiving. It's also trying to take dominant alternatives like the precautionary principle or sustainable development and give those alternatives a kind of richer framework and a richer political philosoph philosophical foundation so that, um, that, that, that those ideas which are often caricatured in debate will no longer be misunderstood. Um, you know, above all, what it's seeking to do is um, provide moral clarity in intellectual argumentation. I often feel as if intellectual argument um, has become uh, technical or specialized to a level where even its own purveyors forget the moral bases of the tools that they're using. And the book is trying to bring those tools up, surface them for direct engagement. Thanks, Professor Kaiser. Thank you.